Now, Mark, as a guy who's walked the walk, 26, 29 total, we've all seen videos of uh, the few guys who had higher totals than that. Uh, Donnie Thompson, 3,000. David Hopp, 3,005. Now, when I watch Donnie's video, I can't imagine how strong this guy is, but uh, it's, it's hard to comprehend to have that much weight on your back. But I, th I felt his squat, and as did some of my friends who were into the into strongman powerlifting, that it was a little high. And as a judge, I imagine it would be difficult to, to really flag a lift with Donnie when a guy's under that much weight. Yet at the same time, we need to have high standards here. You've done it yourself. You, I've seen your videos, and you know with the guys that you train, you, and proper form matters here. Proper depth matters for the squat. How as a judge do you tell Donnie Thompson no? You tell David Hub. How, how can this? How can we? have that happen. I mean, it's, it's obviously a very tough position to be in. How do you feel about that? Yeah, you know, and that's a little bit of a tough question to answer. Being a power lifter myself uh, kind of puts me in a line of fire, and uh, so to speak. But basically, uh, what I think happens is uh, the standards of power lifting sometimes um, are not always uh, on par with where they should be. And so you'll see from one federation to the next different standards of depth. And I feel that uh, you know, a lot of people talk about how powerlifting is a mess nowadays because there's so many different federations and there's so many different standards. Well, I hate to point fingers, but a lot of that has been allowed by the people that came before us. They could have easily stopped multiply gear at some point, but you can't stop it now because it's here to stay. They could have easily stopped powerlifting gear in general years ago, but no one did. Um, there could be changes made for squat depth but nobody really wants to make those changes because people are comfortable with their lifts the way that they are. What I usually tell people in this regard is, uh, I've lifted in the SPF, the APF, some of these multiply federations uh, that have kind of been known for allowing a high squat or two or three to pass. Um, and what I usually tell people is, if you really have that big of a problem with it, then you need to turn in your best numbers from those federations and use numbers from a more legitimate standard uh, that, that you would consider. So I myself would be included in that bunch. Have I done high squats and meets? Of course I have. I think uh, any, any power lifter that uh, has done a multiply meet is probably guilty of it. Uh, some of it has to do with the nature of the equipment. It is very, very difficult to break parallel. Uh, I haven't seen a ton of 1,100 pound squats, even 1,000 pound squats, where you're like, yeah, that guy's hip crease was well below his knee in multiply gear. It just gets to be very, very dangerous. Um, I think at some point somebody would have had to probably change uh, the wording in the rule books and maybe just say, hey, get your hamstring or your quad perpendicular to the floor rather than saying break parallel. And that would have probably helped. Uh, at, least, at least the judging would have made more sense. Um, I also think <clears throat> there's a huge fear factor that happens when these guys are lifting these massive weights. The guy himself oftentimes is scared. Many guys on the platform are scared. And so you don't even really know what happens up there on a the platform, but I've seen weights get bumped on the platform by spotters. I've seen spotters bump the lifter himself uh, on the platform. This happens with Raw as well. You know, don't think Raw is, uh, is so innocent in all this, but these things happen. And I'm not trying to spew a bunch of negativity, uh, but I'm just trying to convey a message. I've also seen, um, you know, I also feel that there's, there's some things that could be done and they're just not ever done. I think if people had two-toned, different colored suits, uh, where the suit was uh, maybe white on top and black on the bottom or vice versa, or the, if there was a line uh, that went down almost like Adidas pants, they got those three stripes that go down the side of the leg, when Olympic lifters wearing those and they warm up, you can clearly see when they're below parallel because that line uh, goes a certain way downward. The, it goes downward from the knee to the hip. But again, even with something like that, you'd have people probably, uh, you know, uh, smudging the uh, lines a little bit and trying to make them crooked to uh, to their advantage. And so, I think uh, there are ways around it. I think having one judge might be a way to solve it. Having the guy actually judge from the front. I know people are gonna get pissed. But uh, people always say you can't judge depth from the front. If somebody gets well below parallel, it's very easy to see depth from the front. So those are some of my suggestions on some things that could be done to probably help you know, improve some of that.